Hi everybody. Hi. Thank you very much for coming. Wow, I didn't even do anything yet. Thanks. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, I'm really excited to be here today to show you Kronos. This is a very, very cool thing. It's going to be a wonderful show, and this keyboard is why. Kronos is a huge advance in technology, in playability, and in sound. So there's been a lot of speculation as to what Kronos is. And what it is, is the ultimate performance instrument, the ultimate synthesizer, and it's also a great, very powerful studio composition tool. So there are lots of things you can do with Kronos. And uh, one of the coolest things about it is that it has nine different synthesis engines. So before we get into that, I'd just like to point out that's the 61 key version right over there. So 61 keys, synth weighted action. And up on the display, you see the 73 weighted key action. And right here in front of me is the 88 weighted key. So both the 73 and the 88 use our RH3 graded hammer action piano keys. Now, on to the piece de resistance, nine engines, a true universe of sound. So in the land of sample-based workstations, Kronos definitely stands out. It does have samples. It has an awful lot of them, but they are just the beginning. So the first engine that I'd like to show you is SGX1. This is our acoustic grand piano engine. So what you're hearing is a beautiful German grand piano. And these are long, unlooped samples, and they're being played directly from a solid state hard drive. That's the next game changer you're going to hear about today. This and other engines are using these gigantic sample collections, and instead of them living entirely in your precious sample RAM, it's playing them right off of a solid state hard disk. So this sample library in and of itself is 4.7 gigabytes in size. Remember the days when people used to talk about how big the keyboard ROM was? Well, we've just blown that spec so far out of the water that it's not even worth talking about anymore. The industry seems to be obsessed with these fast loading times. So why load it all if you don't have to? Here's the Japanese grand. We have two different flavors, 30 different piano types to choose from. As you can see, we've got a beautiful graphic on the 8-inch color touch view display. You can interact with physical properties of the piano, raise and lower the lid, add uh, mechanical noises, damper resonance. You can even change the stereo perspective so it sounds like you're sitting in front of it or out in the audience. So this is just one of nine. The next synthesis engine is our EP1 electric piano. electric pianos. I have six different models to choose from, Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 5, the popular Dino Mod, and two flavors of Whirly. And there are some famous names attached to these. The first one I played was Herbie's Butterfly EP. This is Frank McCombs. So you'll notice a lot more of these, and that's because when we designed Kronos, we asked for a little help from our friends. So every artist that you see here on the screen has been involved in the voicing. So if you see their name on one of the sounds in Kronos, it means it was designed with them to their exact specifications. So there's a lot of fun to be had here. And uh, as an example, here's George Duke's electric piano. <laughs> So 
So you heard some pretty cool drums going along with that, right? That's another huge sample library that we've got playing directly from the uh, solid state disk. And it's being controlled by a drum track. Drum tracks instantly give you access to a library of almost 700 different rhythmic grooves that are appropriate to the sound that you're playing. Many of those grooves were played in by professional drummers, such as Ricky Lawson. So this technology in EP1 is called MDS, multidimensional synthesis. Here, we assemble different aspects of the sound, uh, pitched and harmonic characteristics, the mechanical noises, through time in such a way that we transcend velocity switching and all the other unnatural behavior of samples. So as you move from different velocity levels, there's no, there's no sudden switch. It's a different sound with every strike and it reacts like the natural instrument does. So that's a very cool thing. So moving on to our next synthesis engine, we've given you our CX3 tone wheel organ modeling. <laughs> So as you can see, I'm moving sliders on the front panel of Kronos, and I'm able to access the entire tone palette of an electric organ. And the wonderful thing also is that I can just tap the joystick up, and I can quickly speed up or slow down the rotary speaker. So our rotary speaker here is in full effect, and we've got control over how fast the fast speed is, how slow the slow speed is. We can even uh, decide where the microphones are positioned and where the cones face when they stop spinning. So. It's a little obsessive. It's kind of how we do things around here. I hope that's OK with you. So oh, one other thing I'd love to show you is how I'm selecting these sounds. This is set list mode. Set list is the grand unification of programs, combis, and sequences. Each of these slots can store a program, a combi, or a sequence. And you touch one for instant recall of the sound with all your effects. So you can have 128 slots organized into groups of 16, and you can have 128 of these set lists stored at once. So uh, if 16,000 slots isn't enough for you, I want to see the gig that you're playing. Now, uh, as we're here in set list mode, I'd like to show you something else that's very cool. Watch this. asking for this one, right? <laughs> Smooth sound transitions. Now I can go from program to program, program to combi, combi to program, combi to combi, with no note dropouts and with all the effects maintained as we switch to the new sound. We do this without limiting the number of effects you can use and without limiting the number of sounds that you can play. So smooth sound transitions, that's a wonderful thing. Now uh, back to the synthesis. Remember when people used to program synthesizers themselves? Seems like a long time ago, right? Well, we are bringing the fun of synthesis back with our next three engines, which are analog modeling. The first of them is the MS-20EX. The MS-20EX is a point-to-point -point recreation of the classic MS-20 monosynth, except it's not monophonic anymore. Now there's 48 of them. So basically, the original engineers that designed the classic MS-20 are the same ones that took the original blueprint, uh, blueprints and modeled every capacitor, resistor, and connection inside the MS-20 to recreate it in software. So when we say it's an MS-20, it's an MS-20. Along with that, oh, you know what? One more thing I want to show you. Here's a lead in the MS-20. Now, with this lead, I'm going to jump over to my patch panel. And just like you see on the screen there, all I have to do is touch one point and link it to another one. And I've made a meaningful change. So that patch panel is just as fun as it looks. Now, in addition to the MS-20, we also give you our famous Poly-6.
I'm triggering chords by touching the display. I can have eight different chords on the display at once and adjust velocity based on where I touch it. Now, the Poly 6 gives you every control on the original, as you can see on the screen there, and we've thoughtfully mapped all the controls to controls on the physical control surface. So the fun of synthesis is back. Doing these hands-on tweaks is a wonderful, fun way to explore sound. Now, we've been uh, looking back with our sound engines here, but now it's time to look forward. This is AL1. The AL1 analog modeling engine is a vision of what Korg thinks an analog synthesizer would be if it was designed now. So, th obviously it would sound monstrous. So one of the greatest things about this synth is its ultra-low aliasing oscillators. So basically what that means is it stays pure throughout the entire frequency spectrum. Even when you get really far up high and squeal the notes, it's not going to give you that digital aliasing sound. So it's very, very pure. And it is very, very flexible too with all the LFOs and envelopes and multi-mode filters. Listen to what you can do with a single AL1 note using its own step sequencers and uh, other elements to create the sound. That's an awful lot for an analog modeling synth to play on one note. So, AL1 is very cool. So, analog is not the only kind of modeling that we're doing. Meet Mod 7. Mod 7 has its roots in classic digital synthesizers that use frequency modulation to create their sound. So take one sine wave, modulate it with a triangle wave or any other kind of waveform, and you've got a unique texture. So we've included all that capability, and you see some very signature sounds in here, some of which make me want a taco. <laughs> So we've got your classic sounds covered, but we also take it to the next level. So we can inc uh, introduce PCM as a modulator, we can do ring modulation, wave shaping, and take a sound like a didgeridoo completely to the moon. <laughs> Lots of modulation to be had here, and I'm moving our unique vector joystick, which does quite a lot of things, some of which I'll mention later. So uh, next up is an entirely different kind of modeling, physical modeling. This is the STR1 plucked string engine. Here, you get to design a string. You decide what it's made of, how tense it is, and if it's an acoustic guitar, is it where's the sound hole compared to where you're exciting the string? If it's an electric guitar, where are the pickups? If it's a sitar, What's the string dispersion like to get that noticeable signature sound from a sitar? <laughs> so all of that is being generated in real time, not being played with samples. So I get to decide if I want to pluck, strike, or scrape the string. And I can physically alter the string as it's being played. So if it's an acoustic guitar. I can add harmonics <laughs> by placing a, a physically modeled finger on the string at the right point. And this is what a string would sound like if it was being scraped. kinds of modulation you can do with the controls. And uh, one more quick thing, we would always want to, uh, being a Korg synth, take it to the next level and do something with a plucked string that's not physically possible in the real world. So here's an example of that. A 
The sound is called SeaWorld, in case you were wondering. Very cool stuff. So, we certainly did not leave the least for last. This is HD1. This is our high-definition sample playback synthesis engine. So all the other eight synth engines that you've seen so far have been somewhat mission-specific. Plucked string, uh, analog modeling, uh, frequency modulation synthesis. HD1 covers all ground. Just about any kind of instrument you could imagine is here. In fact, HD1 uh, can incorporate over 12 gigabytes of sample data that's stored on the solid state hard drive. Again, when other keyboards measure their ROM size in megabytes, we've just upped the ante to over 12 gigabytes of sounds. So, and if you remember what we did with four megabytes in the M1, 12 gigs should impress you. So, for example, here's some great strings. Just by hitting a switch over here, I can instantly grab some pizzicato. And uh, here's an acoustic bass. Some authentic fret buzz. And uh, we've also got some great new tape-based keyboards and clavs. So some vintage keyboard instruments are very well represented here. Got the classic sounds, the flutes, the choirs, all the good stuff. And uh, if you want, you can also incorporate wave sequencing. So the legendary wave station keyboard, all the wave sequencing technology that was there is also in Kronos. So I can create smooth, evolving textures, such as. Or add a rhythmic groove. And you can use the vector joystick to go even further and use vector synthesis. To blend between four different timbres and create motion which can then be replicated. So, We've heard some wonderful, wonderful stuff here. Nine different synth engines, definitely a universe of sound. The great thing is you can combine them all together in a 16-part combi. 16 different timbres, all nine synthesis engines together at once, and it can sound very, very large, very fast. <laughs> There's some extra stuff going on there. In addition to the drum track, we've also incorporated Karma. Karma allows you to generate rhythms, bass lines, all kinds of musical gestures that can help your performance. So in addition to the things you've just heard, I can also grab a guitar sound, turn on Karma, and generate some finger picking. Or if I touch the ribbon, gestures. So that's a very cool thing. And then in combi mode, you can actually incorporate four different Karma engines running at the same time, which can sound absolutely insane.
So karma's capable of an awful lot of performance, and it doesn't all have to sound like mad science. It can also sound very acoustic and very natural. So for an example, here is a jazz quartet. Right, make sure we're fired up. So it's generating a sax solo based on the chords that I'm feeding it right here from touching the display. That's some cool stuff, right? <laughs> now, in addition to all the live performance and synthesis power we've just shown you, you can also use Kronos as your composition tool. We give you a sequencer with 16 MIDI tracks and 16 audio tracks, and now the audio tracks support 24-bit resolution. You can mix down your audio, save it to a two-channel WAV file on a USB stick or USB hard drive, or on the internal hard drive, plug in a USB CD burner and assemble the album right from the touch view display. You also have access to our open sampling system. So anytime the inspiration strikes, you want to create a wave file right away, just press the sampling buttons, and you're recording. So it's very quick and very easy. And hopefully you can see from that display that chopping up a wave file is really a joy on this, uh, on this display. In addition to that, we give you a huge effects suite. So you can use up to 16 effects at once, routing multiple sounds to single effects to save space. And uh, these are truly world-class signal processing tools. I want to show you one specific reverb. When we sat with Lyle Mays to create his, his signature piano, he fell in love with a uh, specific reverb that we have. And he just wanted it to be huge and open so people could explore the space and treat the reverb as an integral part of the sound. You get to design the space around the piano. The depth and size of the room, EQ, damping, all kinds of wonderful parameters that let you go to the next level with your own production. So uh, as we look at the back of Kronos, we also notice that there is another USB port. And these, this USB port allows you to connect to a computer. And at that point, Kronos becomes your most powerful plugin. Using the free editor software, you can run it as a plugin from within your favorite DAW. So you have access to all nine synth engines, 16 timbres at once. You can point and click your way around them, and it becomes a part of your computer-based studio. So wouldn't it be nice if your computer could manage nine synth engines as complex and powerful as these and do it with no latency, no loading time, nothing but immediacy between your hands and music? That's power that we can lend to your computer with USB. The USB port also functions as an audio interface, allowing you to send and receive up to two channels of audio. So I would just like to play for you uh, a couple more sounds, and then I will set you free. Here's one called the Era of Kronos, which takes advantage of our SGX-1 acoustic piano engine. <laughs> As you can see, it's very easy to get to get lost in the sounds that you're playing here.
If you have any questions, I'll be happy to stick around. Thank you very much for your time.